a kid worth? He's worth $7,200 a year to the State Division of Institutions. That's the cost of his care at Percrest School. The gift of time is available only from volunteers. I'm Katie Dolan, and I'd like you to meet a volunteer, Ralph Monroe. The institutions do provide the necessary food and shelter that each child requires, and they do a good job of it. But no institution has enough staff people to treat every resident as an individual. Yes, I think we have to recognize that living in an institution as a child or an adult can be a very, very lonely life. The shelter is excellent in most cases, but it's that individual love and guidance and attention it's so needed. Attention, that may be the key word, Ralph. It's certainly one of the key words. Well, how did you yourself become a volunteer? Had you had experience with the mentally retarded? No, I didn't. I was working in the food business here in Seattle, and a number of friends of mine were going to sponsor a cruise for handicapped children on an excursion boat at Christmas time. In some ways, it was just entirely new to my life. And did you have uh, particular feelings about any one person on board? About the fourth night of the cruises, I met a particular little youngster who seemed very much alone. He's sitting in the corner of the ship and didn't seem to want to take part in the activities. And I wanted to make him enjoy himself a little more and tried to get him to relate to me. But he didn't enter in like the other children at all. No, and he was very hesitant when I approached him. He wasn't convinced that I could change uh, any, any part of this experience for him. This is Terry. This is Terry. Oh, now, how did you feel about that after meeting this young man that you were going to help, and he sort of refused your advances? Well, I was somewhat discouraged that after the cruises were over that evening and I was able to place him uh, on the bus to go back to the institution, I was ashamed of myself for not knowing more about retardation and about the individual problems that the mentally retarded face. I also was very curious, but inside I was just angry. Angry. That more wasn't being done. And I guess I was committed to at least finding out what could be done. I went home that night and, and frankly I cried. So then what did you do, Ralph? What did you decide to do about it? Well, it was just a few days before Christmas, so Christmas morning I left my own family and went to the institution to visit this youngster. Christmas is a very different time in an institution. And this youngster was, was I think, especially lonely at that period of time. And I, determined, I was determined that uh, I would at least try to be his friend, if nothing more. So here you are now, volunteering with Terry. You what a difference. That, you can see that I was perhaps having as much, if not more, fun than, than Terry was. Yeah. We became quite close friends in a relatively short period of time. And tried to experience the types of things that Terry hadn't had the opportunity to do before living in an institution. Up until this time, Terry had not spoken, and I tried to talk with him and to speak to him, although he wasn't capable then of, of speaking back. He had never spoken a word in his, his life that we knew of. Well, we really should point out that Terry was a very different boy when we first met him at this time when the film was taken. He looked so... Uh, you can see him talking and he's doing all kinds of things, but he wasn't when you first met him, was he? No, he wasn't at all. One day we were riding near Percrest School. We came upon a large number of school buses, and somehow Terry related these school buses to his happy times and bus rides and car rides, and he spoke a word, and that word was bus ride. And he said that to you first? Yes, as far as we know, that was one of the first words, if not the first, that he ever said. That must have been a big thrill. Very exciting experience. 
That one word led to other words. Mostly it's just being a friend. We also must remember that every handicapped child, no matter what their handicap is, have the ability to learn. And whether it be volunteers working with the paid professional staff people or just volunteers alone, we must recognize that fact that the teaching is a very important part of a youngster's life. And we have come to the point now that uh, it's being universally recognized that education must be provided for all handicapped youngsters. And this is true within our institutions as well as within the community as a whole. Well, why do you think, Ralph, that you, an amateur, the man off the street, suddenly was able to make this boy do amazing things like speaking for the first time. He was, what, seven years old and had never spoken. And within a year's time, with you, he was speaking. Well, I certainly can't take the credit for teaching Terry the many things he's learned. But as his friend, he seemed to relate closer to me than he did to the professional and skilled staff people who could only spend a very limited amount of time with him. I tried to teach him new words. I was able to teach him quite a number of words in this fashion. Yes, Terry's attention span grew along with his other skills. When we started, it was a very short attention span. He couldn't concentrate on one item for more than a few seconds. Now he is capable of concentrating for quite a period of time. It might have been that he was just a little bud ready to blossom when you came along and sure. gave him those extra boosts. Very possibly. He loves to succeed see that when he does succeed in completing one of these tests, he, he enjoys it a great deal. A lot of satisfaction there. Always ready to start something new. We became very good friends. Sometimes I think, however, that the person that's reinforced the most must be the volunteer. Yes, the experiences for the volunteer are very rewarding. It certainly has changed my life, and I'm sure it changes others also. Uh, Ralph, let me ask you this. Are you the only family that Terry has? I could never substitute for Terry's family. I think that's impossible for any individual volunteer to do that. I also feel it's impossible for a, a institution to substitute for a child's family. Terry is, is very lucky now to have a foster family that has taken him in and made him one of their own. It's a very important experience in his life and he has done wonders in development and growth since this has happened. So he's left the institution living in a foster family. He's one of the first children to leave the institution successfully and live with a foster family and this family has, has just done amazing things in helping Terry. Oh, what a difference. It sure beats the institution life, doesn't it? You're absolutely correct. It does. And we need more families who are willing to do this, who are willing to take retarded youngsters to live as one of their own in their own homes. The other thing that's very important to consider with this whole story tonight is Probably, Terry would never be in a foster home today if he hadn't had a volunteer of his own. That could be true. I'm not sure that it would be me or it could have been another volunteer, but I'm sure it's, it's been an important part of his life. And It just comes back to the question of what a child is worth. 